Well, it's great to have each and every one of you here this morning. We've been praying for you and asking God to just move in our midst uh, here on Easter Sunday morning. And uh, if you could help me raise that up, that'd be great. And uh, Jessica, thanks. Um, we want to say welcome. I see a lot of faces that I are unfamiliar uh, or not. we don't see all the time. And we want to welcome you here to the Gateway Church. Again, if you're here for the first time, we'd love for you to fill out an information card. And uh, that just helps us record your visit and lets us know that, uh, you know, that we were able to follow up. We'll send you a note and uh, probably bring you a gift or something as well. So make sure you leave those uh, at, uh, right at your seat once you fill those out and we will be able to uh, record your visit. Today is a red letter day. And some of you have seen some of the promotion for this morning. And uh, we're excited about that, that uh, you guys... Uh, are here maybe because of that. We, uh, we blitz a couple areas in our city, uh, a couple communities that are close by, and uh, if you're visiting from one of those communities, we want to welcome you. Uh, we've been calling today, uh, Easter 2012, a Red Letter Day, and I want to explain what that means uh, this morning so we're all on the same page. This morning, a Red Letter Day, basically, uh, for those of you that uh, have a Bible, um, just show out your Bibles to me here for a second, all right? If you don't have a Bible, ushers in the back, if, if, if you could grab, yeah, show your uh, uh, iPods, that's good, or iPhones, that's good, that works too. Um, but just hold up your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we have a Bible for you. We're going to be flipping through some scriptures here in just a second. So if you don't have a Bible and would like one this morning, just slip up your hand and we'll get those uh, copies to you. Brett, if you could jump up and uh, help out on this side. Anyone need a Bible over here? All right, good, and then over here, thanks. Uh, thanks, guys, for doing that. Well, in our Bibles, in many of our Bibles, I'm not sure the Bibles we're handing out to you, but in many Bibles, the publishers will put the words of Jesus in red. And today, we're going to look at some of these final words that Jesus spoke before he was crucified, before he gave his last breath, and we're calling those the red letters today. And our focus today are to on these last few words. And you say, well, why the red letters today? Well, let me just say this. I hope I'm crystal clear. The red letters that we're going to experience today and go through have profound implications <coughs> for your life, for each of our lives. There's not one of us here that is exempt from what Jesus said in his word. So we're going to highlight these words, and they may be read in your Bible or not, and, uh, and I just want to say, we believe in the whole scripture, Genesis to Revelation, whether they're red letters or not, the Bible is God's word, and it's an authority for us, but today, we're going to take you on a little journey, a pathway to the cross, and, uh, and they, they call that the passion, and, and you know, it's interesting, some of these words that we're going to, to read in just a second here, you want, I want you to picture Jesus have been beaten and broken, about to die. And he shares with us a few last words. It's interesting, though, that before this time, he was mostly silent. Went through six trials. Uh, a couple of those were actually illegal trials, but went through six trials. What was on his heart, though, was people. And I want you to first turn with me to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23, we're going to look at this uh, account, and then we're going to flip around, and so just uh, be ready to flip around with us, and uh, we'll start again in Luke chapter 23, verse 27, it says this, a large number of people followed Jesus, including the women who mourned and wailed for him, Jesus turned and said to them, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, weep for yourselves. He was concerned about people. He wasn't concerned about himself. He said, weep for yourselves. Let's skip down to verse 32. It says, two other men, both criminals, thieves, were also let out with him to be executed. When they came to the place of the skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on the right, the other on the left. And Jesus said, listen to these words in red, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. 
They divided up his clothes cast by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up, and they mocked him. In those words, we see forgiveness. It says, save yourself. Well, that's the last thing that was on Jesus' mind. How many know Jesus could have jumped off the cross and performed a, a miraculous sign right there? But the last thing on his mind was saving himself. You were on his mind. Turn back, turn with me to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, verse 45. Listen to what it says. It says, from the sixth hour to the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama satami, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Those red letters right there, those, that, those words, first of all, fulfill prophecy, which is important. And we understand that Jesus fulfilled over 380 prophecies in his lifetime. But it also gives us the picture how ugly our sin is. At that moment on the cross, the sin of the world, your sin, my sin, is on the back of Jesus. In God's nature, he couldn't look on his own son because he can't tolerate sin. Let's go to John chapter 19. Another great passage in the final moments of Jesus' life before he was resurrected, of course. John 19 says, Later, knowing that all was completed, he completed everything that he came to do. And so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, and again, some red letters here. He said, I am thirsty. A moment of humanity. Yeah, I, I, and it's interesting that in that verse right there, we understand that again, fulfilled prophecy. We knew that Jesus would, would say, I am thirsty. It was prophesied uh, in Isaiah. And then it says, a large, or a uh, jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk on a hyssop plant, and they lifted it to Jesus' lips. And when he received the drink, Jesus said, again, red letters, it is finished. What's important for us to understand, he didn't say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. What was prophesied had been completed. What was required by the law to cover sin had been completed. Justice had been served. Our sin had been paid in full. And also, when you look at that word, it is finished, the word is tetelestai, and it means, it, it can be, mean a battle cry. Jesus in Mark, in, uh, in Matthew, and in Luke, it says his last words were more of a cry or a shout. He said, it is finished! He's saying, I conquered death and the grave. And how important is that for us to understand the reason we can celebrate Easter because just in a few short days he was resurrected and uh, back to life and now seated on the right hand of the Father.